Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alex. I'm rated just under 2000 ELO in over the board classical chess. And in today's video, I wanna go through a few, a few of the differences between classical over the board chess and online chess. Because even if you play like a slower time control online, like rapid or maybe even classical, there are some like key differences between playing over the board and playing online chess which if you do want to start playing more over the board chess maybe go to some tournaments maybe play in a league like i do then i i think a few of these tips could be really useful in kind of adapting to the over the board play style or if you like previously have had no intention of playing over the board maybe i can convince you to give it a go so the first thing i want to talk about is actually openings, but on a bit of a specific level, <clears throat> my playstyle, as you can actually see from the game playing in the background, I've just got a few games going on in the background that I recorded earlier, just because I was playing some Blitz chess. And some of you um, might want to have something to stimulate yourself visually while you're listening. <laughs> um, anyway, some interesting games. What I'm trying to say is, looking at that game, you can see that I enjoy playing Gambits, right? And whether I'm playing Blitz, Bullet, rapid or classical i enjoy playing gambit openings because it's fun like it just makes for more exciting games and i prefer playing chess in that kind of style now what happens typically is when you go to play classical chess you change your repertoire i i i did this when i started playing classical chess i changed my repertoire so that i cut out the gambits and just played more formal sort of openings like maybe the italian or the sicilian or i don't know the spanish like basically playing less fun openings because they're more classical chess because oh that's what the grandmasters play yeah you're not a grandmaster so why are you worried about like your openings not being 10 out of 10 in terms of what the grandmasters recommend? You don't need to. Just play something you're familiar with and you know and you enjoy. That's why I continue to play gambits in over the board classical chess against people rated like 21, 2200, like really good players. <clears throat> I've played gambits against like Fide Masters and gotten draws like I'm not going to say easily because they were tough games, obviously, because I'm not quite at that level yet. But the gambit didn't hold me back whatsoever. If anything, what happens is that when I play gambits, people start to panic because the last thing that you want when you're playing against a lower rated player is for them to like come at you with gambits. Like you, you don't want that as the higher rated player. And I know because I've been the higher rated player in a lot of those scenarios. So... I, the, the, the point of this is basically to say, gambits work. If you play gambits in class in um, online chess, play it in over-the-board chess. Play it in classical chess because they will work. Like, I promise you, they will work. And when, because people aren't familiar with them majority of the time, if they are, they might be too terrified to even accept it. <clears throat> this happens a lot of the time when I'm playing against higher-rated players where they will not accept my gambit because I know the gambit and they know that they don't know it. That's the first thing that I wanna that I wanted to get out of the way because I think it's like a common misconception with playing over the board chess. Second thing is something kind of doesn't get talked about that much, but like physicality. Because the one of the major differences obviously between online and in person chess is that you're actually sitting, sitting across from the person that you're playing against, right? So the way that they look, the way they hold themselves, the way that they fidget, that all plays into like the tension between the players and the mind games going on like off of the board. Like, I mean, the way if, if someone just looks confident, then you're more likely to be like, oh, um, I'm a bit scared now, and that might affect your play style because they look confident, right? And for myself, like I've been going to the gym for the past few years, so I'm fairly tall. I have a decent amount of muscle, so it's it's like makes for an interesting dynamic when I play against people because, like, I would think, oh, that probably plays into my hands, right? Like being bigger, and I mean, maybe it does. I don't know. Like tonight. 
I'm playing against this little Indian kid, and I've played against him several times in my um, chess league, and he is really good. Like, he's unbelievably good for his age. But he's like a tiny little Indian kid, right? So does that, like, go in his favor? Or is that a detriment? Personally, I find it terrifying, <laughs> like, that he's that good at the age that he is, right? So for me, um, or in my opinion, like, his physicality, or kind of lack thereof, I suppose, is actually, like, playing in his favor. Whereas if he was, like, the typical 60-year-old guy, uh, well, at least that's the type of people that tend to play uh, where I play, it doesn't really carry as much weight. But then also, like, the way that someone would dress or just hold themselves or the way that they, like, tap their foot or maybe sip their water or something. Like, there was that whole thing with, I think, um, Pragnananda, when he would, like, sip his water if he thought he was winning. Uh, I don't know if that was Prague or not, but someone was doing that. Um, I know that for sure. And that was like, that's obviously a massive mind game. Because if you're playing against someone that you know sips water when they think they're winning, and then they sip their water, you're going to be like, oh, like, I'm losing. And then you start to panic and the emotions all come into play, which is also another big part of over-the-board chess. Like, emotions are a massive thing, which comes on to my third point, <clears throat> of mental and physical health because I think it's like incredibly important like for chess you, t you, you look at players like Magnus who kind of stress the importance of physical health you look at I think um, I think it was Duda like there was um, videos of him doing like muscle ups and that on uh, I think pull up bars in uh, like parks which is like difficult where it's not that easy of a movement to do right but he's a chess player like, do you really need to be physically fit to be a chess player? I would argue yes. I mean, not only would you potentially get a psychological advantage from just looking fitter, right? <clears throat> Which, again, up for debate, but let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, but also, like, if you're just physically fitter than your opponent, if your game is going on for, like, three, four, maybe five hours, which is not unheard of whatsoever... You need energy. Like, that is a really stressful environment to be in for that amount of time, right? So you're going to need a certain amount of physical energy and mental toughness to be able to deal with that, to deal with the stress and to deal with, like, the actual physical taxation on your body. I mean, there's studies that have shown that, like, chess players burn thousands and thousands of calories during a chess game. And I'm prone to agree with that i mean i know that i'm absolutely starving after i play a chess game so whether that's an indication of me just really liking food or of it you know burning a lot of calories who knows but mental and physical health i think is a really important part of it so if you're planning on playing like over the board classical chess i would like pay a bit of attention to that <clears throat> next thing fourth point is that because of the like far longer time controls in over the board chess, and I also think just generally the higher level of play, because if you're going to go to the effort of like going to an over the board chess tournament or like club or something, you're probably taking chess a bit more seriously. And therefore, because of the longer time control, the more formal environment, making for better players overall, it's much harder to play tactical chess and to win off of tactics because people are just going to see it like if you have 10 minutes to make a move let's say and that wouldn't even eat up that much of your time you're not going to fall for that many tactics like you might fall for a tactic at the end of a string of five moves during a deep calculation but you're very unlikely to hang a tactic in one move that means the chess at like in like an over the board sense tends to be far more positional and long term like more strategic over a long term rather than tactical at least that's what i found when i've played so if you're going to play over the board chess you can't just play like blitz and bullet 
chess to prepare for it where you can win off of your opponents just blundering simple tactics because it's just not going to happen that much. So I think you need to de develop more of a positional understanding of the game if you want to play over the board chess or you can learn more of a positional uh, kind of grasp of the game by playing over the board chess if you see what I mean. Um, but I think I think it's a good thing to bear in mind because it's just a different game. It's, it, it's just a different game playing in person or playing online. And one of the big differences is it's less tactical. It's way, way more positional for the factors that I just laid out. The final thing that I want to cover, and by the way, let me know if this video was useful by dropping a comment down below, please. And if you haven't, drop a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. <clears throat> the final thing is end games. This was in the thumbnail. So if you saw the thumbnail, then you were probably waiting for this. Um, the end games are way more important in over the board chess. And I think there's several reasons for that. Firstly, is that you simply have more time, right? You have maybe maybe like a 30 second increment or something so you've got lots of time to do calculations and to like look at you know 10 20 moves ahead in the future for like a pawn race or something or a king race or something like that right your opponents are much less likely to blunder something like that if they've got a lot of time to think about it i mean even just look at the game that's playing in the background on the screen now i'm playing an end game in a three minute plus two second online game, right? I don't have that much time to be calculating. So I'm playing mostly off of instinct rather than having say five minutes, 10 minutes to do a deep calculation on the position and know exactly what plan I'm going to play. I've got to switch my plan up a bit because I'm not actually sure because I haven't got the time to think about it. If you see what I mean. The second reason that end games are so important I think is that so I think more games simply just go on until the end game because like in over the board in online chess right in online chess I think more games get either just just end like before the end game happens in terms of one player resigns or gets checkmated before you even get to an end game um, but I think also when people have losing positions in classical games or worse positions, they're much less likely to completely capitulate as somebody in an over the board game who can continue trying to find the only defensive resources and keep on fighting until the end game and try and get a draw out of it. Also because the stakes are simply higher in an over the board game because it's normally part of like a tournament or maybe some kind of league where you really need to try and get a draw even if you've got a worse position i've got draws out of terrible terrible positions several times where if i was online i probably wouldn't have managed it but because it was over the board i had the time to really think about it and i also had the stakes of like oh i can't just give up like i really need to try and get a draw out of this game so more games go to the end game you have more time to think about the end game. Therefore, the end game is simply more important because it happens more and it's played at a higher level. So study your end games. Like I don't do it enough. So this is like also a lesson for me because I don't listen to my own advice clearly, but study your end games. I hope some of these ideas in this video were useful and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you agreed with or disagreed with down in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be popping up on your screen somewhere now. So click it.